Hey guys, how you doing? This is one bit back with some more Dota 2. Um, if you follow my Twitter account, um, I promised you guys uh, last week that uh, I was going to have up uh, a few more uh, Dota games, uh, Chen, uh, Beastmaster, and Puck, and this is the first one in that series, and it's obviously the Chen game. Um, I really like this hero. Um, if you saw some of the other um, Dota 2 content that I, I put out in the past, you know that I was working on macro heroes and practicing with them because I wanted to start improving with uh, the variety of different macro heroes in the game and uh, Chen is one of those style heroes. He's very heavy uh, he's, a, he's a very heavy macro hero he's more of an advanced hero. He's harder to play. I mean, he's not on the level, I would say, of, say, like, a Meepo. I think Meepo is still one of the hardest characters simply because, like, any one of his illusions that dies will kill him. But Chen is definitely up there when it comes to the difficulty in playing. And it, that's not necessarily true if you come from an RTS background, but if you kind of suck at RTS games and you play Dota as you know, you, you were attracted to Dota because it's more of an action-oriented and single hero-focused game, then it's going to be harder for you. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's certainly more difficult than playing one of those uh, characters like, say, a Quop or a uh, Anti-Mage. So here's the Chen game. I'm going to go ahead and start it up. Um, I had a lot of fun in this game. And I think I was able to be quite effective. Now, for the start, and they're off. as Chen, uh, I was basically the only support on my team. As you can see, everybody else picked a carry. We have like a mid and uh, three carries. Got a feeling this so be good. I basically had to uh, buy the courier. There was nobody else who was going to do it. But um, that's not the only reason I went with this kind of, uh, you know, simple build. I mean, I think a lot of people... Um, yeah, I was kind of pinging because there were three people top, just so that they knew. But anyway, that I was going to jungle. There was actually somebody that was talking in chat. Um, I don't think his voice chat is going to be in this game because it's a replay cast. And for some reason, they don't uh, keep in the voice chat. But I was talking with my team. Well, actually, I wasn't talking with them. I was just kind of communicating with pings and reacting to uh, things the guy was telling me in voice chat. But the reason I went with this build with uh, Naked Boots uh, Courier is, well, one, because it was the most cost-efficient thing. I mean, I couldn't afford a Basilius after I bought the Courier. But also on Chen, uh, I feel like Naked Boots is a kind of a good choice with him. Simply because if you want to gank early, you're going to have an advantage for chasing down the heroes. Uh, especially if you get your hands on a Centaur, which I was able to do. I think it can be great to, uh, if they have the lane pushed, to go for an early gank with Chen because you're going to be able to chase them down. The Centaur has a really good run speed. He can keep up with you. He's probably, I would say, the best uh, jungle creep that you can get your hands on simply because of his run speed and his ability to keep up with you. I think the Hell Bears are good as well uh, because of their, uh, their stun and the damage that they do, but the Centaur's run speed is the big thing. Like The Hell Bears are not going to be able to keep up with you. So because I have the boots and because I have the centaur, I believe I go for an early gank here. And this is one of the few heroes I think that naked boots is actually a good choice. Yeah, I think I might go for it. Or I don't know if I think I was debating taking that camp, but then I saw these guys were low and it went right ahead on them. And that was a quick early kill as a result. Your pagan ways die with you. Now, unfortunately, it's not showing you on the UI the um, the micromanagement that I'm doing with the hero. That Basically, the tower, there is a button that you can select in the menus that it's a one button. You can assign the button to uh, whatever 
whatever key you want on the keyboard, but it basically switches between you and all of the, the, the uh, other units that you have under your control. So since I only have one unit under my control, it's just switching between Chen and the other unit. And that's, that's what I'm able to do. I'm able to uh, say, press that button. Then I will uh, have control of the, uh, the Centaur. And I'll, he has a Q ability, which is that War Stomp that I was able to stun Shadow Shaman there with. And then I'll immediately press the, the C again after the stun and I'll control Chen and just start auto attacking on him. And then I have the option if I want to use my um, my test of faith to do some burst damage to him. Now the build I went with Chen, uh, just to let you guys know, is not the standard build with Chen. Not so much the itemization, but uh, the, actual, um, the actual spell build. I mean, so far it's pretty yeah, much the down. standard, except normally you wouldn't get anything in penitent, Penitence. You would just go straight for uh, Holy Persuasion. But I'm going more for a bursty Chen build, like a, a Chen build that's built around ganking more so than jungling. If you're going for more of a jungle build, you would want to get up your Holy Persuasion so that you would be able to ha have more creeps under your control. But the burst build that I'm going for is it's depending on penit penitence because penitence is increasing the amount of damage as well as providing a slow. As you can see here. If I didn't have penit penitence at this level, I wouldn't have been able to get that kill on him. So it's a viable option to go with a build like this. I can't remember if he was able to pick up this kill as a result, but I think, yeah, my bird, big bird picked him up. Unfortunately, the bird doesn't have any uh, attack, <laughs> playing a little ring around the rosy with him. And I, did I pick her up? Did big bird get her? Come on, big bird. Oh, I think he does. Or maybe Void gets him. I think Void gets him. Or her. No. Yeah, he does. <laughs> so Radiant's bottom tower ain't a pretty sight right now. The nice thing about Chen, when it comes to jungling, Chen is probably the best jungler in the... Well, not... I don't know if he's the best jungler. He's the best... Let me think about this. I guess one of the best because Enchantress is very strong as well. But uh, he's really great in the fact that he can just hit the, the hardest camps first. As opposed to other junglers that have to start with the weak camps because he has the ability to take control of the creeps immediately. So I guess uh, Enchantress is pretty similar because she can use her abilities to take control of creeps as well. But I would say Chen and Enchantress are definitely in the top, the top two when it comes to jungle simply because they can start with the hard camps, which is what I did uh, when I began and I uh, just grabbed the centaur. Now at this point I'm grabbing the Basilius so I have more mana regen because as you can see in that last team fight I kind of ran out of mana regen. And right now I just came to lane so that I would be able to push the lane back and uh, prevent them from taking an early tower. So my guys were back. Because I was able to get, pick up so many early kills, I have quite a bit of gold that you're normally not going to see on a Chen. But I was able to get up my mana boots. Normally, um, you're gonna ha the first thing you're going to do, even before you get the Basilius, is uh, go straight arcane boots on a Chen.
Now this creep that I have, let me see, can I see his name? I can't see his name right now. But um, I really like this guy because um, he has a uh, his Q. He shoots out this purple orb that does quite a bit of harass damage. He's great. Yeah, you just saw me shoot it there. But he's a lot of fun in uh, that you can... You can use him to basically go to a lane and to harass people back by just spamming that attack on them. Especially like a low health targets, like say a sniper or any of uh, the int heroes, that does quite a bit of damage to them. Guess what's happening to Dyer's bottom tower. So it's a lot of fun to just pick him up and then go to whatever lane you're at and harass. And I think I just sent him in there to die because Dyer's he was pretty low health. Getting the business. And structures looking fortified. I think at this point, the person, the uh, faceless void I was playing with, yeah, he asked me to stack some camps for him. So that's what I was doing there. Basically, if you go at 53 seconds on the clock and you attack a creep, you can. Uh, basically, what happens is there's a system in the game uh, around all of the the. There's basically an invisible box around all of. Die. The jungle camps that bottom tower. and if you're inside of that window if some object is inside of that window like say a ward or an actual another player or even um, I, I don't remember if couriers can block camps or not but usually if a, an item is inside of that um, that camp I think maybe couriers can can block it as well but uh, if you have something that's in that box, whenever uh, the, the timer reaches uh, an even number, like say, when, it's, when it gets to 10 even, then you prevent something from spawning in that camp. But if there's nothing in that zone, then uh, the camp will respond. So what I'm doing is at 53, I'm attacking the camp, and then I'm running away, and it's causing the, the camp to pull towards me. And then once those creeps in that camp run towards my location, then they're outside of that invisible box. And because they're outside of that invisible box, the camp is able to respawn. Now you see on that that team fight how how good uh, penitence <laughs> Guess what's happening was able to work because I was able to uh, save Void from dying there, you know, with a uh, clutch heal on him, and then the penitence slowed down Centaur so he couldn't catch up. Bottom towers getting the business. So getting it, getting a level early is uh, definitely good. It's a good option. The dire best do something about that bottom tower. You can also see the uh, the damage uh, test of faith is able to do the uh, the burst damage. Now, because it's a range, it's between two hundred and four hundred. It's not guaranteed that you're going to get the big numbers there, but I think it's worth it. You know, if especially if you're you're getting farmed like I am right now. I really wish that the. Uh, the voice because this is a replay cast so I don't have the act I didn't actually record it at the time so I can't hear the uh, the voice of the the, the, the person that was uh, not really the team leader but uh, the guy that was communicating a voice chat because I think that would add more into the strategy that was going on right now and why there was pinging but I played this game sometime last week so I, I don't really recall all the, the little details that were going on. Oh yeah, that's right. I was pinging the camp. That's what, that's what the pinging was. I was pinging the camp just to let him know where the camp was. And then I think he was saying that uh, it was too big and then that's why Bloodseeker was helping them finish. And you see, I'm just... Uh, I went ahead and denied the creep so that I was able to get some, some experience from it since it was low. Instead of just letting it die. So, just to maximize your experience, go ahead and deny yeah, your creeps. Instead of just, you know, running them off and letting them die. So you can just absolutely maximize your experience. 
Now this is a kind of a rough situation for Chen because uh, I don't want to get in a position where I get stun locked and and blown up. So you can see I'm trying to macro, but it's it's kind of difficult. We get creeps running out, the lane creeps are running, and got Razor and Centaur War Runner here. Trying not to get caught and trying to macro at the same time. It's a little difficult. And I don't have my uh, my mech up yet. I'm still missing the recipe. I believe I need 900 more gold. I'm sitting at around 350 right now. And I completely forgot that uh, <laughs> the reason I wasn't using that creep is I forgot that when you use the heal, the global heal, it actually heals the, the creeps that are under your control as well. So keep that in mind. I actually got a little too close to that. And I got caught in it. Now I'm slowing him down so we can get him. And I used the pet's burst on him. Unfortunately, I don't think I macroed him to, yeah. And now I'm doing some macro. Yeah, I'm just trying to spam the spell on him. And just I just sent him in to die, basically. Which unfortunately gave him some gold. So you have to be careful with that. You don't want to feed your pets to the enemy team. I think I might die here. No. Maybe. I don't recall. Yeah, I was able to do a nice bit of damage to him. Maybe if Void hadn't ran as, back, as far back as he did. We could have at least picked off, uh, well, Ricky picked him off. But I think we might have uh, got him early and then Ricky could have gone on those other two guys if uh, Void hadn't backed off so far. Because Ricky's putting in quite a bit of work here. I think he survives too because his invisibility kicks in. Yeah, that, might, that team fight could have turned in our favor maybe if Void didn't back as far as he did. But, you know, that, that's what happens sometimes. You get in a, a situation, and I do it myself, too, where it's just your gut reaction is to try to, to live. But um, because you're running so far back, when the tide turns in the team fight, you're not there to capitalize on it. So that's one of the things that I have to learn myself when I play Dota is not, not to be so as scared about dying. I mean, certainly you want to be cautious, but there's such a thing as being overcautious. Now, one of the things that... Um, I think this was actually a good build. Yeah. Yeah, just basically... It's never a bad time to spam Penance, because Penance is giving the damage that uh, you're doing from... Was it uh, force enemy unit to move slower and take more damage from attacks and spells? Yes. So by spamming that on uh, on uh, who's that razor there, I'm allowing a void to do more damage to him. So there's never a bad time to use that on people. But basically, I think this is a good build for this game in particular, simply because we have void and voids in the jungle. He's killing the camps off. So having a uh, a pet centric build, you know, um, I I think I started to talk about it, but there's so much that's going on in this game. I wasn't able to uh, really uh, go in detail on it. Radiance top towers taking hits. But um, an average build like for this. Chen is going to start with uh, obviously holy persuasion, and then it's you're going to go. Two, maybe one level of test of faith and then you're going to get your second level holy persuasion then another level of test of faith and then you're going to normally max out holy persuasion uh, and then you're going to max out your uh, test of faith and then the last thing you're going to start getting is penitence with possibly an early level of penit penitence and obviously at uh, 611 and uh, what is it 16 you know basically the earliest you can you're going to get your um 
your ultimate. Oh, yeah. She basically baited us into into our own death. But with this build, I think this is good for early burst and ganking. And I think that was a perfect choice for this particular game because we have so many carries and the carries are going to end up in your jungle and taking your farm. So by having a more burst centric build, you're able to uh, capitalize on uh, the fact that you're not going to be able to run around uh, a lot of times in force and have three jungle creeps with you. Which is what you can get if you maximize uh, Holy Persuasion. You can have up to uh, three additional jungle creep units with you. I mean, obviously you're going to shoot for uh, either centaurs or hell bears. Um, me personally, I think uh, centaurs are the best simply because of their movement speed being what it is. Uh, the hell bears have a very slow movement speed. It, you're you're going to have a very difficult time to run anybody down with a uh, hell bear. Um, I do like those uh, those those purple uh, those, those purple guys that shoot out the purple thing. <laughs> I, w I wish you could actually curse her over and see the names, but um, I do like those guys too for lane harass. But for the most part, I think if you're going to go for ganks uh, or for a pet build, then definitely the centaurs are the best thing. But you can't really guarantee what's going to spawn in the jungle. Um, the little shaman guys that. Uh, that spawn skeletons. They're nice in that they provide a net, but the net doesn't last long enough. Um, honestly, I think that they need to buff the net that those guys shoot. I think the only reason that they don't is simply because you can have multiple shaman. I think they should probably limit the number of shaman you can have and then just make the, the net last longer. But the way it is in game now, I, I think it would be way too complicated to go with multiple shaman and then try to cast the net one after the other. <laughs> You know, I mean, I guess Meepo does it, but it would get way too complicated because then you would have a ton. You would have three shaman plus each one of the shaman can spawn skeletons. And then you're, you're sitting up there trying to macro all those skeletons and all the shaman and switch between them and uh, the cast the, the nets. About that bottom I think it, and plus the shaman no are super squishy. So, I mean... I, they're, they're, they're one of those characters that's like, yeah, you can use them, maybe, but it's 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 very subjective. i say your best bet is to go probably Centaur or Hellbear in most cases. Maybe maybe those uh, purple dudes for uh, lane harass, but that's those are the ones you want. And then if you can't, you don't really have a choice, you can always go for the, um, I believe they're they're uh, wolves or something. They're alpha wolf, I think, because he has a crit as well. So if you can get a couple of alpha wolves, if you can't uh, maybe get those other ones, then that that can be good too, just for damage. We're just kind of keeping the lanes pushed. At this point, I'm getting wards because I'm the sole support in the game. You know, it would be nice if I could get Agamem Aghanim's up for Chen. Aghanim's is really good for Chen, but I'm just not going to ha have the farm in this game to uh, get it up. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I can do that's uh, most useful for my team, which is uh, get wards up. Radiant's bottom tower seem better days. Yeah. I think somebody scoped me out when I was popping that ward down. That or they were just moving over because the lane got pushed. Invisibility. This game was a lot of fun, I have to say. It's always good when you have... It's always fun when you have a really good game on a macro hero because you feel like you've done so much more. <laughs> than what you normally do in most games. And now I'm kind of hunting around for the right... I actually, I think I... I uh, put um, the Holy Persuasion on the wrong creep. That's why I have that light blue one instead of the the, uh, the main guy in the camp, the, the big purple ones. Those guys have a lightning spell. Actually, I think... I think the spell drains mana or something like that, but... 
It's not very good. Okay, there's Centaur. I, I don't know why I didn't grab the Centaur. I'm just, I think we're running to try to get into the fight here. And I think I juke Razor here. That's what I do. I just, I just hide right here. So he's, he thinks I'm running. And I just let him walk past me. Mid -tower won't last much longer. Just being aware of where the vision is and wh where Dyer's people have vision and knowing it can place. save your life sometimes. The Dyer couldn't hang on to that mid -tower. Now what's happening here is uh, because Razor is able to tether him, he's stealing his strength. And that's why now he's attacking him so hard, but he's not doing any damage. And that's why I ended up just taking the kill from him. Because Razor had taken so much of his strength that he wasn't able to, to seal the deal. That's why I went ahead and uh, took the kill from Void. Normally I would let Void finish, but I wasn't sure if... Because Razor had taken so much attack power from him with the tether that I wasn't sure if Void was going to be able to finish him off before uh, the chrono ended. That's why I went ahead and uh, snagged the kill. Now, um, as I said, the first thing you're going to want to get up on uh, Chen is the Arcane Boots, uh, followed by a mech in most cases. I believe now I'm going for... I think I'm building a Vlad's on him right now. Because I know I'm not going to... I just know I'm not going to be able to get the farm with the, the heroes that we have in this game. So I'm just going for something more practical. Now, the nice thing about a Vlad's is the Vlad's is going to transfer over to your... Uh, your creep army that you have so as well as anybody else that has melee in the game so you're going to be able to support the team by giving them more health which is kind of the theme of chen i mean chen's ultimate is a uh, global heal i have the mech to do uh, aoe healing and then now i got the vlads on top of that or i'm building the vlads to give my team additional healing so i'm basically just building myself to be a hard support with healing and regen for my team and I can see that there's a team fight that's going on up top here so I'm keeping my I think I start keeping my eyes on that knowing that I have the global heal that's going to come off cooldown pretty soon and I just want to keep my guys at max health nice almost off cooldown Yeah. I wasn't quite able to save Ricky because of the cooldown timer, but I immediately uh, healed my guys up to full as soon as it came off. Now one of the things I do here, um, because I wasn't able to get jungle creeps, is I basically take the most powerful creep that's pushing, which is the range creep that does the most damage, and I turn it against the uh, the lane. So that's another thing that you can do. Um, just because you don't have access to um, big bad centaurs or hell bears, doesn't mean you can't uh, take advantage of Chen's abilities. And I think I do it again here too. So that completely stops the uh the lane trouble brewing at radiance bottom tower from pushing by basically taking those uh those range creeps and turning them now against the tower so that can uh do some damage and i pulled back not because i was able to see purple that uh is down there but uh just because i had pushed so deep into their jungle and it was kind of dangerous for me I'm not sure if he's getting my Vlads or if he already has the Vlads. 
Let me see if I can switch on him real quick. Oh no, he had a morbid mask, okay. Not really a good choice for Ricky. I think it's tempting, but he doesn't really need it. Guess what's happening to Dyer's bottom tower. I hate these little ogres because they're just they're so useless. Look look at their, their movement speed, it's so slow. I knew it'd be nice if they had like even more health so that they could just be oh there's a helper. That's that's a good one. Now he's great because his Q is like it's basically like the uh <laughs> He has the, the same move as the Incredible Hulk. He smacks his hands together and he does this like kind of seismic uh disturbance in an AoE that uh, stuns people and does quite a bit of uh, AoE damage in the, in the process. I think it's a mini stun. I might be mistaken though. I know it, at least it does damage. Radiant's bottom tower seem better days. I think I might use it here. No, I don't. I think I'm going to help these guys that are getting chased. And then I... Instead of running right into that team fight, I do it smart and come in from the back. And smart play leads me to a double kill there. I'm definitely getting way more farm than you would normally get on Chen, by the way. And I think at this point, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a double digit kill Chen game. That's what I'm. That's now my goal. Don't quite make it, but I get close. Go ahead and plant some wards here. Now, it might be tempting to um, try and heal up this this creep, which actually, if I was thinking, I could have go in, went ahead and used my mech Guys, top towers and do it, down. but sometimes it's better just to keep the mech for team fights. You know, sometimes if you... I, I went ahead and denied that because I was at full health and nobody was close by that really needed it. I didn't want the en enemy team to possibly grab a hold of it. But uh, the mech will heal up your uh, your creeps as well. And you can also use the uh, second part of Holy Persuasion to send them back to the fountain. As well as your heroes. I don't actually think I used it much in this game, if at all. I don't think I'd use it to save anybody in this game. But uh, I think that's a big thing that I could have maybe done differently in this game is uh, anybody that was low health use uh, Test of Faith to uh, send them back to the fountain and save them. Because that's another really big thing. Yeah, and I went ahead and I used it there. I probably shouldn't have done that. It was probably a waste. Because it's a long cooldown, but... Now I have all... I have that max, but... We wanted to push this tower. So I went ahead and healed. I don't know what she was thinking. Those are three really big creeps. She's trying to. She was trying to take on. I don't think she had a battle fear at this point either. So she, it's not like she was gonna blow. Yeah, she hadn't built her battle for yet, so she wasn't gonna be able to blow them up with a single hit either. And there's that sniper. He's still. I think he's looking for me to try to shoot his ultimate on my face, but fortunately I'm in Viz right now. And he picked off my...
See, that's one of the worst, the, the hardest things with these guys is the fact that um, their run speed is so slow. That's one of the reasons uh, guys like Chen, you don't see them much in uh, random matchmaking. It's something that you'll see like pros play, but you don't see a lot of people playing these guys because it's very hard getting used to them. Getting used to macro, getting used to um, controlling these little these little guys, and uh, especially with their little movement speed or their slow movement speed. I think I might die here. I basically did everything I could, but because he tethered me so long. I didn't have any attack damage to kill him. I basically should have ran the second I saw him. And I would have had my uh, heals to uh, spam on myself and I might have gotten away. Basically, the longer you stay close to Razor, the, the greater chance that you're just going to die. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this death real quick. All right. And we're back into it. And I have my Vlads completed. I can't remember what I'm working on now at this point. I think it's a four staff. I think that's, I think that's what I'm making. I'm not 100% sure. And the only reason I, I think I'm making a four staff here is just so I have an escape mechanism versus Razor and anybody else. You know, I also have Phantom Assassin I have to worry about so that I have a way of just quickly getting away from them. I think that's what, I, I think that's what I'm working on now is to have that four staff. Which is a decent choice. It gives me some more ent. Helps me be a little bit more survivable. Or helps me to uh, push somebody, say, um, like, say, uh, Shadow Fiend. It can help me to push him in, in range of uh, the enemy for his ultimate or something like that. So has some synergy with my team. Pretty sure that's what I'm building right now. I don't think I get to complete it though. Yeah, I was trying to save Bloodseeker's life there, but I didn't quite make it. They he had too many guys there. He wasn't going to be able to burn them down. They had there are a lot of tankiness in that team right there. Unfortunately, everybody wasn't together. Shadow Fiend's able to burst him down. See, this is... That's what I'm talking about with um, going too far back because I went way too far back. I should have just maybe went half as far back and I would have still been safe and been in range to uh, use auto attacks, but I just went ahead and uh, kind of nabbed the kill there with my uh, test of faith. I didn't have to really take it, but like I said, at this point I was like, you know what, I want to get a Chen game with double kills, so that's what I'm, that's what I was doing there, but in most cases you don't want to steal kills from your carries. But I think at this point, I felt that we were gonna take this game. I think we were pretty confident. I mean, our ta our bot tower is getting pushed pretty hard, and I think I might have been pausing here because um, I was l either listening to something in chat to what the people were saying, or maybe we we're strategizing or something. I can't remember. This wasn't a team game too, by the way. It was just a random matchmaking. All of my games that I've posted on my channel uh, have been random matchmaking. But, yep. Again, move too far back. I could help with that. Could have definitely cast Penitence on Centaur. 
and gotten a burst on him and we would have probably killed him. Now I completely screwed that up and I I meant to get the penitence on a razor but I accidentally got it, got it on a creep. And if I hadn't have done that, we could have probably killed him faster and uh, possibly gotten Centaur as well. At this point, your void is uber farmed though. I was able to get him. But. And I think I went too hard on Shaman because he was so low health. I knew that if I got a good um, test of faith that I would be able to kill him with it. So I kept trying to go on him here. And I think it cost me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he, I ended up getting killed here. Because I, I just tried to... Yeah, he was so low. I was just like, ah, oh, let me get him, let him get him. And it cost me. I ended up feeding. I was straight up paying uh, Chen like Night Stalker. <laughs> During this game. I was like balls to the wall, Chen. Unstoppable. Puppy, who's that? I never heard of him. I'm Chen Stalker. All right, let me fast forward through this. Uh, fast, 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 fast. Radiant Radiant's bottom tower ain't a pretty sight right now. All right. Don't have wards up, but mm -hmm. I guess I'm not going for a four staff because I got a point booster there. I think maybe I had started on a four staff. I don't know what I'm doing right now as far as the build. I can't remember what I had queued up. Kind of sucks in replays that you can't see it. It doesn't show it. For some reason, it just shows that shift click shop thing. But, um,. Yeah, I just grabbed these because they were the only option. They're, <laughs> my jungle obviously is getting farmed out by Void, which is fine because he's the hard carry. But uh, the, yeah, these guys are horrible late game because they, they die so fast. There's nothing really you can do with them. The net doesn't last long enough. I mean, they really need a buff in my opinion. They either need to increase the uh, the spawn rate of the centaurs and the, the hellbears, or they need to buff these other creep camps so that they're actually useful to people that uh, use them. Two for one. Because they're way too meh. This the, this net doesn't last nearly long enough. Okay. I'm, Double damage. Yeah. Basically, what I'm doing here is I was I didn't have enough slots for wards, and I knew the wards were down, so I dropped. I, I sent the wards on the courier, knowing that I could just plant them real quick and then pick up the item that I had right there. Because I knew people were pushing, so I figured, hey, they're probably going to, they're not going to be mid right now. And then that's what I was able to do. I was able to just plant the wards real quick and pick up my item. And I probably would have ran over, instead of just planting that ward mid and had planted it by the other river spot. But I didn't know if somebody would be walking over there. It was kind of a little dangerous for me, so that's why I just stuck it mid, so we at least had some vision mid. But it would have been better if I planted it at the river. Yeah, I think I sent him into doing that. And you can see how how weak sauce it is. It's like one 1,000. That's it. <laughs> really? One second? That's that's the longest you can net? It's just... That's lame. That that it needs... That at least needs to be like a, a 2.5 second or 3 second net. You know, I, I don't understand that it's just way too nerfed right now. It's fine if they would just limit the number of those guys that you could have under your control at a time. But, like, a, literally a one second net is just, like, useless. 
and I'm, I'm probably talking out my ass. There's probably some pro players that like, you know, super amazing with macro that or micro that uh, I know I always call it macro, but uh, with uh, micromanaging the units that are able to basically chain them like one after the other. But I'm certainly not one of those guys. I think I was just looking at the map right now and I'm, I'm seeing what's going on. If I'm going to have to heal or what for that. And I think also in team chat, uh, that uh, in voice chat, that uh, the guy that was kind of uh, talking about the team, I think maybe he was saying to go rush or something. Regeneration. So I knew we were going to meet up. I actually didn't mean to pick that up. <laughs> I was actually trying to ping it, and I accidentally clicked it, and because I, I wanted to have that for uh, um, what's his name. Shadow Demon, but I was trying to uh, ping it and I accidentally clicked on it. So I'm just an accident, accidental douche right there. And again, I'm looking for centaurs. I'm looking for some decent creeps, but it's spawning garbage. Killing spree. They, those things need some type of ability to make them useful. These need some type of ability to make them useful. They're just garbage camps. None of those camps. There's like three jungle camps that have absolutely nothing useful in them. And the only thing it really hurts is Chen. I mean, it makes jungling a lot easier, but it also... So it makes like farming the jungle easier, but it also makes Chen kind of useless. It would be nice even if Chen's uh, Holy Persuasion worked on those magic immune creeps. And I repented him. I was trying to get the kill there, but I missed it. At this point, I think we just we push for the win. Yeah, that was my last opportunity, I think, to get a kill. It would have been so nice if I could have gotten even ten kills, go double digit on a Chen game. I think I was coming over here because I wanted to uh, see if I could pick up a kill. Oh, I was... I so wanted to get her, but we ended up winning before. And there you go. That is an example of how you play. I would say that that is more of a almost a ganker Chen build and uh, play style, you know, where it's uh, focusing less on uh, the uh, the pets, the, what I would consider more of a pet build, which, I mean, that build is also a ganker because then you have like three actual pets that you can use to gank. But this is a little easier if um, you're less familiar with the macro. I think I'm gonna do another uh, playthrough that shows how to do the pet build, you know, the more standard build where he ha he built up his pets and he has the three pets, you know, traveling with him, you know, the kind of stuff you, that you see uh, in uh, the, the, the pro scene more often. I think I'm going to build a, uh, a game more like that. I mean, I, I play that quite a bit uh, or I have been, you know, just practicing, uh, getting familiar with macro heroes and I, I'm, I, I'm really loving it. So I, you'll definitely see that out of me uh, coming soon because I enjoy playing Chen. Um, I, as I said uh, at the beginning of this uh, cast, if I'm not mistaken, um, I started playing Beastmaster as well. So you're definitely going to, and I love Beastmaster. He's definitely one of my uh, my top uh, p 
picks as far as like my favorite heroes in the game now that I've uh, started playing him more regularly. So um, you're definitely going to see more of the macro heroes, and I'll go over um, the more complex stuff. Um, and I'll begin to do that with my uh, Beastmaster game, which you will be seeing hopefully soon. Uh, so I hope you like this, guys. Um, as always, uh, this has been one bit. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, like, thumbs up. Uh, oh, and just as a note, um, when I say uh, like and thumbs up, I'm just referring to the fact that I got a Facebook page and you can like me on my Facebook page, thumbs up. Um, I don't really show the thumbs up and things, but um, it does help me because it's giving me an idea of uh, what people enjoy in videos or what they like about the videos. And I don't have comments enabled just simply because you get way too many trolls on channels when you have comments enabled. But I do like to hear from the community uh, comments. So, and if um, it's not a trollish comment and it's uh, directing to the point and there's a there is something that I can respond to. I will respond to comments, so don't be afraid to uh, leave the comments on my channel, on my YouTube channel, because I will um, post the uh, the ones that are conversational and uh, you know non-combative, and I will put them up there and uh, I will respond to it. But as I was going to say, uh, as always, like, thumbs, sub, retweet, get the channel out there so that other people can enjoy it. Hopefully is uh, you have later.